Alex Neal, can you begin to explain what unfolded on the pitch here this afternoon? Um, yeah, I think I think the magnitude of the game was too much for us. You know, I thought we knew how the importance of it, but we didn't handle the occasion anywhere near well enough. I think away games in particular are as much about mentality as there anything else, and um, I thought we struggled with that. Which doesn't say a lot for your your set of players. Many of them are experienced. That they shouldn't be getting overawed by a championship game in March, should they? No, and that's a discussion we've had. Um, but equally, all we can do is comment on what happened on the pitch. So we've got an understanding and a belief about what should happen. But then you've got to comment on what did happen. You know, and that's where the the differentiation is between the two. Um, is the fact that there's an expectation level, which. I think for the majority of the season we've struggled with, if I'm being honest. And you know, there's been big games where we went to Bottom, we went to Rotherham, we went to places where we need to pick up wins, and we didn't perform as well as we should. It was billed by some as a season-defining game. Here you were, a chance to get within three points of the playoffs. Yeah. You're two 0 down within within about 20 minutes. I mean, that, that isn't good enough, is it? No, it's not good enough. And, and not only that, the, the two goals are our own doing. You know, obviously we make a mistake, we get punished for that. And then the second one, they break down the side after we give the ball away in the, on the right-hand side of ours. And then the cross comes in, we don't mark the striker, which we spoke about the whole week. And he wins a free header. And then the corner, it's a straight pick-up, set plays, man for man. And their boy scores, who wasn't even meant to be in the box. He was only in the box because Hutchinson went off. So he was about the fifth choice header of the ball. And we didn't deal with it, you know. So, listen... I, all I can do is apologise to the fans who made the trip up. You know, it was hard viewing for them as it was for me. You know, the players are really despondent and disappointed by how they performed. Um, and that's, yeah, it's, it's tough to take. So all I can do is apologise and assure them that we'll be working as hard as we can. It must make it even more galling that, I know Sheffield Wednesday played well, but they, they haven't had to play five goals well to, to score five times against you I today. You're your own worst enemies. Yeah, I didn't think they played that well, to be honest. I thought they were decent. You know, I thought they scored when they were on top. You know, Forrest Airy's free kick that he scores isn't a free kick in the first place, but to be fair, it was a bit quality from him. And then we don't pick up, I think it was either Rhodes or Winnell just peels off for back here centre-back for the fourth goal. And we're playing a five at the back at that stage. Um, if you defend that way, you're never going to win any game. So it really is as simple as that. You talked about the players' mentality. Can they get up for big games? You know that people always look at managers in, in this sort of situation. Yeah. The buck stops with you. How much responsibility do you take for what's just happened? All, all the responsibility. I mean, I'm not passing the buck on to the players, but the players are responsible for their individual performance and their collective performance. And ultimately, I oversee that, so I'm responsible for it all. And ultimately, if you look at the players today, they didn't play anywhere near their levels, which I should be trying to get them to. And collectively, they didn't play anywhere near their levels. But I think it's easy to blame one person. And don't get me wrong, I'm not shirking responsibility for one minute because I set up the team um, and I'll take all the criticism that's coming my way. Um, but equally, I think the players have got to look at how they performed. And uh, listen, the players are the players are honest. I mean, they're not they're not silly. They they know they haven't they haven't performed. You know, and they're really disappointed, as I say. But certainly at the moment, for fans that that isn't that isn't adequate. It's not enough. I mean, they want they want more than that. You've been honest all the way through as, as Norwich City manager. You, even at the end of last season, you said you'd have a good, long, hard look at your own role in, in what had yeah. happened. Are, are you getting to that point now? Because you're nine points adrift of the playoffs in, in March. I, I think we all thought Norwich would be doing better than this. Yeah, we've underachieved. No questions about it. So I'm not going to stand here and say that we are where we should be. We aren't where we should be. I mean, but ultimately, what we've produced on the pitch is where we should be on the table. And when it's came to the big games, and we've had a lot of big games, um, we've been found wanting at times. I mean, I think that's it's a shared responsibility between me and the team, and ultimately we've not done enough to put ourselves in a better position where we are just now. Come back to this phrase about it being a season-defining game. To, to lose that heavily, it, it leaves no room for doubt, does it? it? It shows that before next season, changes are necessary at Carrow Road, and, and yeah. maybe playing staff first and foremost. Yeah, listen, it, it will get looked at um, thoroughly. I'd imagine from head to toe, um, as it should, and then decisions will be made. I mean, so some of the decisions won't be mine, some of them might be mine. I'm not sure what will happen, but equally, we've got to look at the bigger picture and we've got to plan now for the remainder of the season, but also looking forward to next year as well. Um, so, yeah, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of things to look at. Realistically now, you're nine points adrift of the playoffs. You haven't beaten any of the top ten in the Championship this season. That Any hope of promotion has gone, hasn't it? That's what a lot of the fans think. Oh, it's difficult. It's extremely difficult for this point. I think there's 10, 11 games left, whatever it is. Um, so it's still achievable. 
I mean, if we're in really good form, we'd be sitting here thinking, let's keep going, winning the next game, win the next game. Um, the bottom line is, if we perform like that, there is no chance. I mean, if we perform as we think and expect and hope that we can, then I think we've got we've got a chance. But um, yeah, it'd have to improve pretty quickly. I think we all thought Norwich would be mounting a serious promotion challenge this season. You had the squad to do it. Were we wrong? Is this squad not as good as we all thought it was? Um, I don't know. It's a difficult one to answer. Do you know what I mean? Because I think that we've had a group of players that have been at Norwich for for quite a number of years, considering how often the, the sort of modern day player moves. Um, they've done it extremely well over that period of time, but I don't think there's any sort of, I, I'll be honest with you, I can't answer that question. It's difficult to say. Um, as I said, I think we've underachieved. I really do. I think we've underachieved. I think I've underachieved. The players have underachieved. And as I say, it's a shared responsibility. Nobody's happy about it. Um, and we need to do better. Simple. Alex, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.